Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio. Today, we're excited to welcome back Steve Piacente. Steve is the owner of Next Phase Life Coaching. He's an author of best-selling novels, but also the book that you're going to want to read now, especially getting into 2023. Uh, the book is called Your New Fighting Stance. Good enough isn't, and you know it. And that's really what we're going to talk about, because uh, did, did you go for it this year in 2022? Was it just good enough? and isn't. So it's time to kick some butt for 2023. Uh, Steve is also the director of training at the Communication Center in Washington, D.C. So go to his website, stevepiacente.com. Steve, welcome back. How are you? Hi, Lisa. Great to be with you. Hey, this is great. So 2023 is here, basically, right? And things are looking a little bit better in the world, depending on what, you know, news media you're watching and what story. But it mm-hmm. seems like things are opening back up, but we're still in this huge uh, fluctuation of people taking chances of starting a business, maybe working from home, maybe doing some extra part time. But there's still a lot of shift in the country and around the world. So uh, reading your latest LinkedIn uh, story about, you know, time to ask some deep questions um, to really propel 2023 to success is it's inspiring to mm-hmm. get past our little that little voice, that monkey in our head. <laughs> yes. You know, we're meeting today. Uh, it's Black Friday. It's the busiest yes. shopping day of the year. But I, I really believe that the best gift that you can give yourself is to do a little self audit uh, about how things are going in your life, your career, and make some plans for 2023. Mm. You seem to go on a series of questions. And I was thinking about this the other day about your background in journalism and in newspaper reporting, um, that that is a that is a career of asking questions and asking the right questions to get the information. So as a life coach, does that play a role in this? Because even reading your article, you're going, all right, everybody start asking these hard questions of yourself. You know, you mentioned that I, I'm also the director of training at a company called the Communication Center. And in, in that role, I'm more of a consultant than I am a life coach. And people ask me, what's the difference between being a life coach and being a consultant? Uh, What I answer, and I think it's pretty simple, is that as a consultant, if you ask me how to get from A to Z, I'm going to tell you the fastest way I think you can get there. If you ask me as a life coach, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about why you think you're not getting there, about the obstacles that are in the way and how we can get through them, over them, or under them. So it's a long way of saying that as a life coach, what I'm trying to do is give you a compass. As a consultant, I give you a roadmap. Ah, good point, good point. And you're accredited too. Like you went through a whole certification program. I always like to bring that up because you see a lot of people out there who've lived through a lot, definitely have knowledge, but then they decide, okay, I'm going to be a coach and tell everybody what to do for the rest of their lives. Well, we, we all have friends or relatives who say, you know, you really give good advice. And so then they start to think, well, maybe I'll become a life coach. Uh, honestly, there's a lot more to it than that. And I went through a, a long, year-long program uh, that I chose. It's called IPEC Institute for Professional Excellence in Coaching. And what I really liked about this one, because there are a lot of different programs out there, is that this is a very experiential program. So in other words, they will give you strategies and tactics and then watch you coach and then give you feedback in real time. And so that was very important to me um, because as I say, there are ways to do it and there are ways not to do it. And this is someone's life. You know, when you think about people going through change, um, you certainly went through a big change with newspapers changing. I mean, we know that in being in the media industry too, we're always facing these huge changes and they're life changing. And that's what I think we're still going through in this country. Are you seeing that as a coach that a lot of people are swapping careers? Uh, Maybe they're moving. Um, A lot of that is happening right now. You know, the way I look at it, Lisa, is that, um, you know, people uh, at some point in their life, they get on a bus and they have a destination in mind and they keep riding that bus and they keep riding that bus. And sometimes I think you need to pull the pull the cord and get out and look around and see if where you originally intended to go is still the proper destination. 
Mm. And maybe that's why part of, you know, COVID changed people where they're suddenly at home going, you know, this part of life sucked. (laughs) And I didn't think of it. I'm so used to taking those, it becomes a habit, right? Where we can change our habits and make them be new habits that push us towards our goals. Well, that's exactly the kicker on the book where it says your new fighting stance, good enough isn't, and you know it. Um, but the only way that you know it is if you think about it and and realize that maybe you're settling and you're not feeling quite as fulfilled as you should be. You know, most of my clients are very highly functioning, very smart. Um, and for one reason or another, we come back to that word fulfilled. They're not feeling fulfilled. Mm. And so why is that? I mean, maybe it was fulfilling at some point. Another, another thing that enters it is that everyone around them would be surprised if they acted uh, disenchanted or upset with their lives. They look at it from the outside and they say, you have a beautiful house, you have a great car, wonderful family. What right do you have to feel unfulfilled? And so people sometimes uh, repress the feeling that they could be doing something different, something better, something more lively for them because those around them wouldn't buy into it. I think it's the wrong way to look at it. I think you have to look at it from inside out rather than outside in. I I agree. And getting to the heart of it, which is not always the easiest thing uh, to just sit down and go, okay, why am I not feeling fulfilled? That that's, that's a hard thing. Is it, is it a personal thing? Is it a professional thing? And that's where I think what's also interesting in life coaching is you're putting business and personal together in one place because it is all encompassing. So what is the first thing when you look at, I'm not feeling good, what are the first things people should start asking questions and should they write their answers down? Well, let's back up a second because okay. you put your finger on something really important. And that is that, you know, I'm someone who believes the shin bones connected to the knee bones connected to the thigh bone. So if you're not happy in your work-life balance, um, maybe it has something to do with not being happy in your personal relationships. All of these things, spirituality, um, how you're feeling physically, uh, all of these things are, to me, are connected. And if it's not all, I mean, of course, it's never all going to be perfect, but figuring out those pain points, I don't think they're disconnected. I think they play into one another and figuring out where the problem is, uh, Mm. is really important because it relates to everything else. Mm. What have, you know, right now there's a lot of trauma, actually, people going through some really serious things, um, whether it's loss of loved ones from health, maybe going through health themselves. Um, I could give you a list of things just from my inner circle of friends and, you know, family, uh, Mm. people going through some really difficult times. And yet, having to put chin up and go to work and act like everything's fine, you know, and that's a very difficult card to play. And I think sometimes you have to realize I'm going through some pain or some, you know, maybe physical or emotional yeah, and be able to maybe shift things so that you can breathe and deal with it. I feel like sometimes we don't give ourselves breathing room. Yeah. You know, there's, there wasn't much good about COVID, um, but one of the things about the pandemic is that it did give people more reflection time. Mm. Uh, And if you use that productively, positively, you were able to do what I said earlier, which is is to take a self audit, really assess, um, are you you traveling in this this destination you really wanna be traveling in, or do you need to make a detour? Do you need to make a turn? And the time, the time alone that we didn't commute, that we saved during that two hour commute back and forth to work each day, that alone gives us more time to think about it. Uh, Some people use that productively, some people did not, unfortunately. When when it comes to that fulfillment thing, when you say time for a detour, a tour, a turn, how much are you seeing it of people kind of being stagnant, maybe in the same role in their career, and not busting ahead because maybe maybe they've they've reached the ceiling in their career or in their in their specific job or you know the actual place they work for or even in their company um if it's their own so how much of it is maybe not going and getting that extra education you know that kind of thing because if you're not changing and and growing i think that could actually lead to just 
frustration. Although I can't handle that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm already annoying myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And, and sometimes I think the mistake that people make is uh, not looking beyond their comfort zone. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to use myself as an example. I was a reporter for over 20 years, a daily newspaper reporter in the print journalism vein. And I had it in my head that that was the only thing I ever would know how to do. It was the only thing I was good at. It was the only thing that I could possibly do as a career. And then 9-11 happened and the bottom fell out of the newspaper industry. And, you know, one of the first places that newspapers cut is the Washington Bureau. They say that it's like cutting furthest from the heart. So the local staff stays, the state staff stays, but the Washington staff, they're usually the first to get cut. And that's what happened to me. And it was, it was a little bit terrifying. We, uh, I was yeah. married, I am married. We had three small children at the time. And all of a sudden this job, this career that I had for over 20 years was going to be disappearing. And so what could I do? The, the Washington correspondent jobs are few and far between. So usually they like to promote from within. Uh, so it would be very hard to get another job like that. So what was I going to do? Well, the problem for me, and I think the problem for a lot of people is that I was looking through it through too narrow a lens. So the better question, and if I had had a life coach at the time, the life coach probably would have said, one of my favorite questions is how else can you look at this? And the way to look at this was an opportunity to think about what I had learned as a reporter that I could transfer to other disciplines. So when I started looking at it through that lens, then I realized, well, maybe I could go into public relations. Maybe I could be a university professor. Maybe I could wind up doing what I eventually did wind up doing, which is being a speechwriter. So I spent several years as a speechwriter in one of the federal agencies. You know, it, it's not such a far stretch. I had just never thought of it that way. And so my, my advice to people is to try to look at what you have learned in your career so far that might be transferable. Look for the dotted line to another industry maybe you haven't even thought of yet. Mm. This is a great way to come up with different possibilities and possibly opportunities. Well, it's interesting. I mean, we look at now we've got careers that weren't there when I was in high school, you know? <laughs> I mean, social media management is like a whole career now and you can go to college and learn about it. And I'm going, what? We're gonna learn how to use, I don't know if we wanna use Twitter, I'm just kidding. And, and even knows? within that, there's so much changing. Look what's going on with Twitter. Big time, big time and, uh, change. And Facebook just laid off a whole bunch of people. So you see you know, this across the country and around the world, England's not doing so great either, you know, uh, you, but at the same time, we have all kinds of new jobs, new careers. It's the same thing when you look at going from coal energy to solar energy, that's just a shift. It's still energy, but it's now learning something new um, that's going to be healthier for the environment. Now someone's going to yell at me, but you know, that's, it's, <laughs> it's an interesting thing, yeah. but we do have these new things and it's we can do new things because of the internet i feel like there's so much more Absolutely. opportunity yeah. you know lisa do you remember that george clooney movie called up in the air oh no i have, i don't think i've so, seen it oh so this is a movie where george clooney has he's like the guy that they send around when there are going to be massive layoffs and he's the one that goes around and fires everybody Oh, yes, yes, I did see that. Oh, well, there's a great scene in this movie where a guy who had been with the company that he's working with now, uh, he's been there like 20 years or so, and George Clooney has to fire him. And they, as they go through this process, they noted on his resume that at some point when the man was much younger, he had wanted to be a cook or a chef. Mm. And they, you know, they said, well, wh why don't you think about that again. Why don't you see if you could get hooked up with that and try that uh, after this is over? And that's what wound up happening. And it was a great story. And it was, a, it was just, my point is that sometimes we never consider things that maybe we had been interested in in the past, or as I say, could possibly be um, uh, in the future 
based on what you've done in your career so far. And even what you have is a passion for maybe your hobbies, you know, look at this, you know, we run a park magazine, but our hobby was hanging out with animals in parks, you know what I mean? So it's, it, you know what I mean? You can take something that you're really passionate about and move towards something new in that field. And what do you think about volunteering for, for folks oh, change? Yeah, I, I think that there's been study after study that shows uh, when you volunteer, you feel much better about yourself. So it's the old, it's better to give than receive, but um, I would, I would definitely recommend that if, if people have the time. When, when you look at getting people to ask these questions of themselves, doesn't that alleviate the pressure of things a little bit because you're taking an action step by writing things down, questioning, and maybe let, making a list of your qualifications, you know, making a list in, internally and writing it for yourself versus what you do on a resume is two different things. But if you really list all the positive things that you have in your skill set, mm -hmm. it starts to make you feel a little bit better when sometimes, you know, maybe a layoff, maybe you're a Twitter, you know, an ex Twitter or Facebook employee, and you're going, holy cow, we had the world at our fingertips. Now what? Mm -hmm. uh, but you've got, you've got backup, you know? Lisa, I, I do it a little bit differently. And let me tell you how I do it. Mm. So I'll say to a client, uh, particularly a new client, uh, play along with me and just close your eyes and try to imagine it's two years from now and everything has worked out exactly the way you want it to work out. What are you doing and who are you with? Mm. And they'll take a couple of moments and sometimes they'll come up with something that surprises even in themselves. And so once we figure out what that holy grail is, then you can start talking about, well, why is this so impossible? And what are, what are the things that are in the way? What are the obstacles that are in the way? How can we start working on them one by one? You know, this has to be uh, a step-by-step -step process. We are what? We're about a month out from New Year's Eve when everybody makes their big resolutions. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I think that's too late. I think that's like looking for the fire extinguisher after the blaze has broken out. Right, right. So I think we should all be thinking about this now. And then, you know, we want to figure out what the goal would be. And then how, what are the things that are in the way, how we could start addressing them. Uh, but, but it has to be, you know, um, I, I would say it should try to be realistic. You know, Lisa, if you told me you wanted to be an astronaut and go to the moon, I would probably say stick to the trailer and, and uh, <laughs> it's not really going to happen. But, you know, realistic, achievable, and what is one step that you can take to start working toward it? And sometimes that's as simple as making a list of people that you can start networking with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then also, um, you know, looking at taking these steps, sometimes people go, okay, this is my goal. Here's the hurdles. I've got my game plan. And I think what's so important about what you do is getting people to really question and have that internal dialogue, think about what you're doing, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be just once a year. It shouldn't be every December you look at it and then be so rigid about how you're going to achieve your goal. Because, I mean, we're talking about a life of change that, we need to be prepared for detours, right? So if we're always asking questions, mm -hmm. we need to acknowledge, oh, time for a detour. Mm -hmm. And do we take it this way or that way instead of ignoring it and going, no, I'm sticking to my goal this way because life doesn't kind of work that way. Well, and then you, you actually leave something out as well, which is that once the holidays pass and everybody gets back to their desk uh, and then the email, emails are piled up and the list of to-dos gets enormous, so, you know, when I work with a client, I also ask a question that we haven't talked about yet. Um, once we agree on some kind of action plan, the question that I ask is, can I hold you accountable? Will mm. you give me permission to hold you accountable to do the things that you say you want to do? And that, believe it or not, even with well-seasoned professionals, uh, turns out to be a really important step because as I say, they get back to their office or their desk and there's so much to do that the um, action plan that you had been so excited about kind of goes, goes by the wayside a little bit. If you have a coach, a certified coach, 
um, helping you with this uh, and holding you accountable. Lisa, you said you were going to do this. You haven't done it. What got in the way? Then we can have productive discussions about it. I went we... to a park, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and, but then we can get back on track. You see this? You see how this works? Yes, I, I like that. And I think that's another qualification that you get from working in the news industry because the paper is not going to stop, you know, and if you've got to get that story out, you have to get that story out no matter what, right? It's, you have to get, you have, we run by deadlines. Yeah. Well, you know? as I said earlier, everything is connected. So being in the newspaper business, yes, being a parent also contributed <laughs> yes. to that. You know, there's a everything is connected and we shouldn't look at things in isolation. We put, we should put everything teaches, in a silo. Parenting teaches you detours. Yeah. <laughs> and humor. We're allowed to laugh too. Is now how about when you go through knowing maybe you got fired and it's your your fault? You did something you shouldn't have done. Have you handled that kind of situation where now you have to have an honest look at what you did and go, okay, well, I'm glad I did it because maybe, you know, maybe it is a good thing sometimes. Well, you know, that would that would lead to a really long line of inquiry, which is like, why did you do it? Um, what was behind it? What were you hoping to accomplish? What did you not think about when you took this action? So, you know, there's all kinds of reasons that um, people might lose their positions. So, I would want to get into an investigation of all of that before we made any any decisions about anything else. Wow, I think that sounds like a follow up, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you got fired. Now what? Oops. <laughs> you know, I think well, it's easy now. I mean, people are also, you know, like on social media and all these things happening are making some, you know, stands that um, maybe mm-hmm. employers don't like as well like main being vocal about things which maybe they should maybe they shouldn't it, everything's different but i think that sounds like a good follow-up to this conversation what if sure. you did the no-no <laughs> sure know? sure so you know and then you know I, I also think it's important for us to acknowledge that sometimes people have often probably the majority of the time people have real Im- things that they're dealing with um, right. sometimes it's health Sometimes it's financial. And so that is a legitimate impediment for getting off the bus and picking a new destination. I totally get that. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes, you know, particularly with finances, you, you charted your course at a time, maybe it was five years ago, and maybe at the time your financial situation was, was one thing, but maybe it's something different now. And have you looked back at it recently? That's all I'm suggesting. Mm. I think the financial thing is is an important thing because it's changed for people. It's kind of like during the 2008 crash, you know, 2008, 2009, people that were, do, it's like everybody swapped around, you know, with what was happening, depending if diligence, and I think it's the diligence that needs to happen. I think that's what you're doing a big reminder of is look at, you know, your your personal situations, your financial situation. And maybe you've been spending money on coffee every day that could have gone towards getting a new degree or something, you know, coffee's expensive these days. I can say that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hear you. Um, you know, there's another thing that one of the stories in the book, uh, your new mm-hmm. fighting stance, uh, talks about a guy who, whose lifelong aspiration was to become like a sports announcer on the field for a major league team. And he achieves that and realizes, you know, a few years in, this was great, but maybe it's time that I move on. It's not as glamorous. It's not as fulfilling as I once thought it would be, or as it once was, you know, Mm -hmm. we should, we should acknowledge that things are fluid. Things are dynamic. They're not going to be static. Mm. And that's a, what I think is really important about your book is they're true stories. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you were talking about the finance too. Um, I remember Rob's story of really being in, you know, putting it all into his company and, you know, having debt stat- stack up and stack up, but he was really adamant about paying his bills and mm-hmm. he was pedicabbing what for in making, he had a brain aneurysm come in or, you know, something oh, like yeah. that. Remember he had all of this medical yes. on top of like here he's invested in hugely and has to make money 
yeah, he even did pet sitting. <laughs> we don't do it for money, but he did that and really got himself into a, a better situation, but never gave up, you know? So I think sometimes we can, we can help ourselves a little bit more than we may not realize in this if we don't take inventory. That's what I'm saying about what yeah. I like about your, your article in this is really reminding us to take inventory instead of letting life kind of take us on the ride. Right. And there's a certain degree of self-awareness that has to take place. I, I always like to say, though, that the important thing is to be self-aware, not self-conscious. So mm -hmm. we don't want to, you know, go crazy with all of this, uh, but, but maybe there is some time to carve out where you can take an honest look at where things are and where you'd like things to be and see if they are in alignment. Mm -hmm. And if not, maybe there's some changes to be made. Awesome. Well, everyone, it's that time of year. Get going, get cracking. So I want to give everyone uh, your website again, stevepiacente.com. And also uh, go get the book, Your New Fighting Stance, Good Enough Isn't, and You Know It. And Steve is here on Blend Radio often. Every few months we get to hang out with him. Uh, so keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. You can also hear his recent interviews if you go to blendradioandtv.com. He's in our expert uh, department there. So thank you so much and happy holidays, Steve. Thank you, Lisa. To you and Nancy and all of, all of your many, many listeners as well. <laughs>